anytime you want to swap your gear to another device, anytime we connect it, you got to do a full reset. So let me connect to a new phone. Alright, so that should go through the reset process for here, which is really going to drain the battery down. Another pixel. What I need to do is go to the Play Store and search for Samsung Wearable. Let's install that. Gear S3. So it's not going to connect it now because it's still resetting. So I'm going to wait a minute for that to finish up and then I should be able to connect that. So let me stop this for a second. Alright, so now it's fully rebooted. So I found it. Let's connect. I'm going to say yes here. I'm going to allow my contact history. Because this one has the LTE version. So now you have to install extra stuff. So I'm going to hit OK. Let's get the gear plug in. I will say, I do like the Pixel, but, and the screen is pretty good, but it's clearly not on par with the Samsung Note. I mean, obviously it's half the price, uh, but. Samsung displays are just something else. So you gotta install these various services. All right, so there is my Gear S3. I'm going to read all these. Uh, I have a Samsung account, of course. I've had Samsung for a long time. Uh, we're going to see if it does it, but this is one thing that Google does better than Samsung. Samsung has a Samsung Pass which is a good, a better feature they have. A better feature that Samsung has is that we'll use biometrics to confirm you, but it's not as good about automatically popping up. Like, once you want to click here, you know, I'm, I'm blurring that out, it says my email address, but Google automatically pulls these things up. It would do this with my Note, with my OnePlus 6T, uh, and this phone, of course. I always get these pop-ups to sign in. I'm going to say check for backup. It never does it, even though I have that option turned on. Of course, the watch needs to be able to read notifications because that's how it works, obviously. And now you're essentially done. So you can see I'm on this watch face now. If I change it here, it will change there. Uh, as far as the default ones, I kind of like this one the best. Uh, now you do have to go in just about every time and update some apps. So 
Oh, you install Samsung Hill. That tracks my steps and it ties into my Fitness Pal account. I'm going to agree to everything. This one in particular, sometimes I'll even be on a Note 9 or the S10. And I still have to type in my Samsung account, which is, seems silly. It seems like it should know it. But here, Google is smart enough to figure it out. Alright, so now this part is set up. So, uh, obviously it's not doing anything because I don't have my... I just reset the watch. Obviously, with this... Google gestures to go back to my other app. You just pull up here and it takes you to the your past apps and we'll go back to here. Uh, see we'll have five updates available, so let's do those right off the bat. Uh those I don't care about. Reminder service I want. I like this all-in-one watch face, but I've had some trouble with it. It would be my preferred watch face, but every once in a while the weather quits working. I don't like that. I'm going to try it again, though. This is not a Samsung. It's a third party, of course. And we're going to update the alarm. And the little circle means you need an update. So I'll update that. And then the down... Arrow means it needs to be installed. Calendar, of course, I'm going to update. So these I've downloaded before, and it's wanting me to download them again. That's what the little arrow sign means. And the weather, this one always needs to be updated. Stop watching timer are two apps I use a lot. I don't know whether or not initially installed they should be, but I'll go ahead and re-download those so you change the icons again. Back when Samsung and all these watches were first coming out, everyone complained about not having apps. It's not really understanding, it's not really use a lot of apps directly in the watch. It's more to interact with notifications. But these are two apps I do use a lot. Uh, mostly the timer. And I use that all the time. Stopwatch occasionally. Uh, weather, of course, I do look at. But as far as, like, install it in Spotify natively, I tried it before. It doesn't really work as good as having it on the phone directly. So, I just don't see a point in it. When people complain about not having apps on your watch, it just doesn't make sense to me because that's not how I would use the watch or I can't imagine that's how it was designed to be used in the first place. It's not supposed to replace your phone. It's supposed to accompany your phone. Uh, so here's something knowing uh, Samsung Health on defaults to have in the permanent counter up here. We don't want that. So, I'm going to turn off ongoing notifications, and that should, nope. I just turned, I don't know how to get them off, but I only need notifications from my watch. Alright, so now, let's click on the weather on the watch. I'm going to allow... Access to the weather, of course. Add location on your phone. So now that popped up the Samsung app on here. I'm going to agree to that, of course. Let's see my location. I'm going to just click it. 
Oh, you don't need to click it. That was a mistake. All right, so it has my location. Let's just check again. No updates available, so that's good. It has the weather in Celsius, so go back to the Wear app. All right, so let's go to apps. Oh, another thing to clarify: my watch has messages and phone because. It has the LTE version. If you don't have the LTE version, it probably doesn't have those options for you. So I'm going to change the weather settings to Fahrenheit, and I'm going to have it refresh every hour. Another thing I like to do is change the system. Go to this advanced option, and the double press home key. I don't use S voice. Uh, but I do use the music app a lot. So let me show you an example of how I would use that. So let's say I'm playing a song. Uh, let's play some Jelly Roll. So now on my watch, when I double press it, it shows me the same song here. And if I pause it, Now pause it. Now hit play. Pause. And you can even adjust the volume if you hit there. You can turn the volume up. So this is really good for if you're in the if your phone's in your pocket and you have headphones on, you can just double tap your watch to adjust the music. And that'll work whenever you have. If I had a podcast playing, it would show the podcast player. If I had Google Play Music, it would show that. So that's pretty great. And here I also add the stop watching timer. So now this will be my regular watch face, right? I can see my battery. See, it takes a beat on the battery to reset it and reinstall everything. I can tap on the weather. I see my weather just fine. You scroll there to your weather, and here I have my app. So if I want to start my stopwatch, I can do that. Or if I want to start a timer, like while I'm cooking or something like that, I'll set it for like five minutes. And you can even go off of it; it'll just buzz in the background while it's playing. If you want to change your watch face? Just hold down. Like I said, this all in one's my preferred. And see, so here's another silly thing, right? So, it always says it can't find a backup, but now it has this thing set up just like I had it with these three. Because you can change those three apps at the bottom. But like I have it seen, now it's still on my timer. So this is the problem I have, is that the weather would quit updating. It used to work perfectly, so that made it my favorite watch face, because it says the time, it says the day of the week, and the date your steps, and your weather, and the chance of rain. Alright, so now it, is, <clears throat> now it is showing 54, so that's good. So I'm going to leave it on for a while, and we'll see uh, if it breaks or if it keeps working. I have it set to do not stir because I was making a video, but you can turn that off. It's airplane mode just because I have LTE in this one. And that's the watch face, always off or always on. I'm not always off. Now it's always on, so now it won't fade out. So, you can scroll. You could use Samsung Pay with it. I don't find it being very easy to use on the watch. I love Samsung Pay on the phones uh, because you can use your fingerprint to really make it quickly. Here, you have to type a code in. I, I'm just not about that. But yeah, so say you're on the home screen, you can scroll over, see your notifications, and then just swipe them away. All right, well, thanks for checking me out. I'll follow up with you, let you know how the watch is going, and 
because we're going to try to go with this as my daily driver for a couple weeks. Uh, although the OnePlus 7 Pro is coming out, so that will probably tempt me as well. Alright, well thanks for checking me out. Like I said, we just switched from the Note to the One, two, from the Note to the Google Pixel and added my Samsung S3. Alright, thanks for checking me out. Ask any comments. We're going to see if this little guy can replace the Note. Thank you.